What's going on, y'all? I want to give you my first impressions and a review of the brand new PreSonus Quantum 2626. So I have a PreSonus Quantum. I have a Quantum 4848. Uh, those are the interfaces I use in my studio here. Uh, so why a Quantum 2626? Well, the studio that I work out of, I've installed Studio One there, and I've really wanted a, a PreSonus interface to go along with that setup in that studio. And, you know, we have an antelope interface in there right now. As y'all know, I've had a bad experience with antelope. And even if you listen to my Faders Up podcast, I talked about wanting to get rid of that interface. Spoke to the other engineers that work out of that studio as well, and they all agreed. So uh, we now have a Quantum 2626 that I'll be installing tomorrow in that studio. A fun fact about this interface, this is PreSonus's first Thunderbolt 3 interface. So I like that PreSonus has the Studio Magic uh, sticker here on the front. I can't remember if the Quantum has that on the box. I think it did, but just a little reminder here that you've got access to this bundle. Of course, this comes with Studio One Artists. And uh, we're going to take a look inside the box here. So inside the box, got the power supply, manuals, obviously, and of course we've got the interface. So what's not in this box, this is, was, was a complaint that I had with the Quantum, is that this is a Thunderbolt 3 interface, it does not come with a Thunderbolt cable. I get it, uh, Thunderbolt cables are expensive, and another issue is we're on Thunderbolt 3 now, you, so we've got Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3, USB-C. If PreSonus was to include a Thunderbolt cable with this, which would they include? That would all depend on uh, the computer that you have and the connection that you have. So uh, it is a bit frustrating to open the box and not be able to get going right away, but you know, if you have a Thunderbolt 2 uh, computer, you will need one of these Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapters, which uh, <laughs> cost $50. I don't know why this adapter costs $50, but that's Apple. Uh, if you don't have a Thunderbolt cable, it's going to cost you another probably $40. I think they're like $39.99. So I'm just going to cost you almost $100 to get up and running with uh, this interface if you do not have your Thunderbolt connections. But I'm going to get this hooked up, uh, get the firmware update ran, update anything that needs to be done, and I'll be back with some examples of some sound through it, and we'll be taking a look at the front panel as well. Okay, so looking at the front panel here, we got your eight mic pre's all in the front, and on the left side here, you have your phantom power for channels one through four and through uh, five through eight. Uh, really not a fan of that. I'd prefer... Uh, phantom power on each individual channel so you got your eight gain knobs for your mic pre's and i didn't realize it at first but there are some lights next to these if i press the phantom power you'll see them light up here so those indicate signal on your on your mic pre levels here main output knob you got two headphone jacks i like that i don't understand why all interfaces don't come with at least two headphone jacks, especially if you're recording someone. Now, I want to point out uh, that, oh, the red, or not the red, the blue light there lets you know that you're connected by your uh, Thunderbolt connection. Okay, so I want to point out that these first two channels are mic instrument. The rest are mic line. Uh, the line inputs are on the back of the unit as well with uh, some returns that you can use for inserting uh outboard gear, compressors, EQ, so that's really nice. A rare feature to see on an interface, so I am a, a fan of that. These knobs feel nice. Uh, they don't, they're not too tight. They've got just a nice amount of give to it, and the uh, main output as well feels a little loose, but actually the way I'm going to use this, it's just going to be run all the way up because I'm going to have the monitor station uh, connected to it. Uh, let's flip it around and take a look at the back. As we look at the back, I do want to 
point out this nice PreSonus logo here on the top of the interface. It looks nice. But on the back, uh, power on and off button, Thunderbolt connection. Uh, we've got work clock in and out, your uh, SPDIF in and out, MIDI. Main outputs left and right, I uh, like that. I like that we're not just using two of the line outputs as your main outs. You've got dedicated main outputs. You've got your line return in and preamp out. Uh, like I said, you can use for inserting some outboard gear into those first two channels. Just a quick look at the back. So let's hop into Studio One really quick, and I'll let you hear uh, some stuff or just my vocal that I've recorded uh, going through this interface. So we're here in Studio One, and I've got three files that I recorded. Uh, two files are a condenser mic and a dynamic mic going in using the preamp of the uh, 2626 and one is a condenser mic going into the Neve 511 just so you can hear the difference of the Quantum 2626 pre against a standalone pre. Uh, so I'm going to play these uh, one by one. So this is me speaking into the Mini K87 from Roswell going into the PreSonus Quantum 2626, and I've got the gain at 50%. So this is me now speaking into the Mini K87 from Roswell, going into a Rupert Nee 511 Pre without the silk, and into the PreSonus Quantum 2626. This is me speaking into the Rode Procaster, which is a broadcast dynamic microphone, going into the PreSonus Quantum 2626. So the preamp on the 2626, I, mean, I feel it, it sounds fine, very usable. I do think that the Neve sounds uh, smoother than it, but that's a, an example of a condenser mic there and a uh, dynamic mic. So I want to point out some things, being a, a quantum owner, that while this is... PreSonus's newest interface. It's definitely not its flagship interface. Uh, just as a quantum owner, there's some things that I'm noticing that we don't have here. Uh, first thing is the remote controllable preamps. Uh, with the quantum, you can control the preamps on the quantum from within Studio One. Uh, you don't get that ability with the 2626. However, if you get a get or have a PreSonus DP88 and you use that in conjunction with the 2626, you'll be able to remote control uh, those preamps. Another thing with the Quantum, you have uh, dim and mute and also talkback on there uh, that you don't get uh, here. And so definitely the Quantum is still the flagship interface. It's also a more expensive interface than this one. I mean, at $599, I think that's a very fair price for this interface with it having eight preamps uh, all again on the front, which uh, for me is going to be really handy because it's gonna I'm going to be able to uh, patch in gear that I bring in to the studio very easily with this. And I use Studio One in that studio, so uh, all of PreSonus's interface and gear in general uh, interfaces very well with Studio One. Uh, PreSonus does a great job of that. So uh, being able to use a PreSonus interface with Studio One is going to make me really happy uh, in that studio. Uh, but that is my uh, first looks and just a quick review uh, with the PreSonus Quantum 2626. Normally when I do reviews, I have other instruments that I showcase that the that I showcase it on. But, you know, with, with everything going on right now with this coronavirus, all my sessions have been canceled. So uh, this is what I have right now. Uh, but any questions, comments, uh, let me know and I'll catch y'all next time. I want to invite everyone to check out my new podcast, The Faders Up Podcast. It's a podcast about pro audio. I've got me and three other Nashville professionals. We're discussing pro audio, pro audio topics, pro audio lifestyle. And it's available on Apple Podcasts and it's available on Spotify. So check it out, rate it, let me know what you think.